I'm joined by Michael Hudgens, Global Read Strategist with J.P. Morgan. Michael, in September 2009, you issued a report that said REITs gave investors the best of both worlds. What led you to this bullish conclusion, and do you have a new opinion on this in the past six months? A key premise to our paper was that REITs do act like real estate over the long term. All right? This is key, that REITs can provide real estate investors yields, appreciation, and total returns that approximate what you might get from a real estate allocation over the long term. What we think drives this is the fact that REIT values are highly correlated to real estate values over longer term holds. Okay? What this means, of course, is with a potentially very long recovery in real estate values lying ahead of us from very depressed values, we have good prospects, we think, okay, for total returns for REITs, as well as for correlations. Because what we've seen in the last cycle, and what we should see moving forward, is that as REITs respond to the long recovery in real estate values, right, the values of the real estate they hold, they will act increasingly like real estate, less so like equities and fixed income. And therefore, you should see a normalization of correlations um, between REITs and some of these other um, investment uh, asset classes. But I think we all acknowledge that REITs do act like equities in the short term. All right? Now, this can be very good at times, particularly we've just seen it recently. When real estate values are coming down, REITs tend to dip down very dramatically. They then respond to equity market conditions, like for instance, the US government cutting rates, or um, the demonstration by REITs themselves, for instance, to tap capital markets, to give confidence to investors that they will um, not only survive, but thrive. These are the things that allow them to respond positively while real estate values are going down, kind of a hedge in a way, if you will. Um, once that happens, of course, we've seen that historically that REITs tend to trade sideways or consolidate slightly. Um, but then trade up again once real estate values are confirmed to have bottomed. This is exactly what we're seeing right now. It is classic, it is textbook, it is what we saw in the early 90s, and once again gives us real confidence that the conclusion of our paper um, is a valid one. And among your clients, what kind of allocations have you seen to commercial real estate in REITs? We've seen some definite trends amongst uh, investor allocations. Um, they are evolving, however, as we, move, as we move from 2009 to 2010. 2009 really um, saw a bunch of, you know, a group of tactical kind of allocations amongst our clients. So the discussions were very much about um, allocating, if they were not in the space already, allocating to take advantage of distressed uh, valuations as well as a potential savage recovery, um, which, as we know, turned out to be about 120%. Um, those clients who are already in the space uh, were looking to add. They were doubling down, um, typically for the same reasons, and focus very much on U.S. REITs. Um, because amongst the different markets, uh, global, international, and U.S., the U.S., of course, is probably the highest beta. Um, as we move into 2010, what's very interesting um, is that the discussions are becoming much more strategic. All right, clients now are thinking about whether, or not, whether they're in or not in, uh, about how do they get involved in the space. For more information on this and other REIT news and analysis, check out REIT.com.